trick by saying, oh, males over there, females over there. Strange, there's not that much differences, but that must be because we haven't got a big enough sample or our images aren't subtle enough. We should really forget about males and females. If we're interested in behaviour, let's look at behaviour. It's not to say that environment postnatal learning plasticity isn't just as important, but some of those very early biological factors might be, might be helping us understand why the two sexes um, experience risk differently. If you look at the real research on this, and if you look at the data, it's very clear that men and women have somewhat slightly different life priorities. There's, they're fairly slight differences. Good afternoon. Good afternoon. Thank you very much, everybody, for coming along to this session. And if the size of an audience and the, I think, the silhouette of standing figures at the back are to go by, the difference between men and women, whether it does or does not exist, is going to be quite an interesting subject. So thank you all for coming. And um, uh, I'm staying for what I hope will be um, uh, a scintillating 45 to 50 minutes that really looks at the question of, are men from Earth and women from Earth? <laughs> <laughs> this seems to be the central point of it. On my fridge for many years has been a lovely magnetic postcard, one of my favourite postcards. It's got men and women. And above men, it's got a simple switch, on, off. And under women, it's got dials, knobs, arrows, little readouts, digital head-up displays and everything. And it does seem to me that women are complicated and men are pretty <laughs> straightforward. <laughs> Now, is that the kind of neuro-nonsense that is really being spouted out in this world? Well, we have three top boffins to talk about this today. And I will all, I'll, I'll introduce them, not necessarily in order of annoyingness, <laughs> but in, in order of what I think is hopefully um, uh, different ways of looking at the subject. With me <laughs> is, is Gina Rippon. Now, Gina, you're a professor of neuroimaging at Aston, aren't you? So, right. so you're a neuro-boffin, really, aren't you? Yeah, yeah. yeah. Now, this <laughs> lady is outspoken in what she describes as neuro-trash, neuro-bunk, a neuro-four-letter word. These are things that really, are, I think, something are big problems for us, and certainly for me as a psychiatrist today. And she's spoken outspokenly on that very subject. With me is, Mr. is Professor Simon Baron-Cohen, who is no less than a professor of psychology at Cambridge University, He's an expert on autism, but for me, he's made much, much richer contributions to many, many debates about how far biology and psychology can explain human nature. Can it? He's written many books on the subject. Um, the Essential Difference, I think, is your book that addresses the issue of gender difference. And also, I think you've written a book in, in this country. It's called The Science of Evil is the American title, isn't it? Yeah, so Zero Degrees of Empathy. Zero Degrees of Empathy is the English title, so that's something... And in the blue corner, we have Helena Cronin. Now, Helena is co-director of the Centre for the Philosophy of Natural and Social Sciences. And uh, she's a philosopher by training, but actually, she's not really. She's that rarest of things, a practical philosopher. And her, and her way of being practical <laughs> is through evolutionary science. She's an unashamed Darwinist. And uh, we'll be hearing it from Darwinism a little later, I think. Yes. But first of all, I want to give each of them three minutes. And once again, you know... Chatham House rules and timing rules apply here. Gina, I'd like you to go first. I'd like you to tell us what you think about this idea. Is there a difference between men and women, and is it all biological? Okay. Well, the question I was asked to start with, are mental differences based in biology, which really means are men's and women's brains different, and is this what drives the differences between men and women? And I have to say, when I started this, I thought... I really wish I wasn't here, not because Hay isn't a wonderful place, but because I think this is an 18th century question. Wonderful uh, advances in technology in the 21st century, amazing ways of imaging the brain, fantastic ways of, of looking at big data sets, and yet we're still asking 18th century questions and still coming up with 18th century conclusions. I think it's time we moved on. So, I mean, I could take my whole three minutes as an academic unpacking the question, saying, what do we mean by different? Um, I'll set that aside for the moment. But I do think that we should be careful that lots of people say, well, when I say different, I mean on average or 
these types are more common in males and females. I think we need to be careful because I don't think that's the message that gets out there. Different for people means different categories, nice little box with you know, a switch or another box with dials, men, women, that's all we need to know. And then we know from that all the other characteristics that we might be interested in. So we need to be careful of that. So just quickly in the remaining two and a half minutes, re-examining the evidence. Um, and I'm saying re-examine. I think the evidence has already been re-examined, re but we still ignore it. And I think that's really what I'm trying to say. So we've got three levels. We're interested in behaviour. Men and women behave differently. Well, do they? There's a wonderful paper came out recently with a title that I wish I'd thought of, Black and White or Shades of Grey, where somebody re-examined all the so-called psychological sex differences which characterised men and women and found that actually they're not really categories. If you have a single dimension, you'll find that the scores of males and females are pretty equally distributed along that dimension. So we shouldn't be thinking about behaviour in terms of categories. And this was like 120 plus psychological characteristics characteristics including you know fear of failure and masculinity and femininity even the other level we can look at is the kind of cognitive skills, the kind of thing that I look at at Aston, looking at the different kinds of um, processes that we go through in order to understand the world around us. Big understanding, there's differences between males and females, differences, males are very good at spatial tasks, females good at verbal tasks. Again, if you look at the evidence, the differences are tiny. And there's a nice paper by Janet Hyde came out recently talking about gender similarities, showing that actually men and women are much more similar than different, and yet we still think about them as different. And so we need to think about why we still think in that way. And we also know, culturally speaking, as we look across the world, as the gender gap in terms of education and, and financial independence closes, so do differences in, in cognitive skills. Can't be based in biology. But at least, at least we say, well, we know we're on safe ground when we're talking about biological differences between males and females. XX chromosomes, XY chromosomes. Well, fortunately for me, I um, don't know if you can see this, but this came out in Nature quite recently, august uh, scientific journal, Sex Redefined, saying that actually we should really be moving on from a binary understanding of sex, even biologically, males and females aren't that different. And I know from the work that I've done that the, males, uh, the brains of males and the brains of females really aren't that different. So just to conclude then, it strikes me when I look at this, the history of this kind of question and how it's evolved, that scientists and, and, and actually people who still hang on to this difference show controversially, some kind of signs of frontal lobe damage. There's a task, there's a task called a perseveration task, where if you've got damage to your frontal lobe, I won't go into details of the task, but you're asked to sort cards into different categories and you're told, yes, if it's a colour category. And then the experimenter will change the category and say, actually, it's the number of shapes on the card. If you've got frontal lobe damage, you still keep going on with the colour, even though the experimenter says, sorry, it's that, or doesn't even tell you its shape. So there's something about the difference between between males and females, which makes us stick to this old-fashioned binary dichotomy. I think we need to move on. So effectively, I'm saying we need to move on from the 18th century. We need to move on from the kind of Mars and Venus concept. And we need to say that there's actually um, much more interesting, much more informative, and much less harmful, which I'll come back to later, categories than thinking of males and females in terms of male brains and female brains. So uh, I'd probably start off by saying that I agree with, uh, with Gina, surprisingly. <laughs> Stop, <laughs> Stop there. <laughs> um, in, I hope in, not. In that I, think, I think we are moving towards dimensional approaches rather than categorical approaches. So male and female as categories are not, is not really helpful. That a lot of um, what you can measure, either psychologically or at other levels, biologically, um, is showing that a dimensional approach uh, is more useful, that people are situated at different points on dimensions. Uh, a second point of agreement is actually that um, any differences you find when you compare groups of males and groups of females are really quite small and subtle, um, and that the similarities are probably uh, more um, evident than the differences. <laughs> <laughs>